Destination Freedom is perhaps the best-known black old-time radio series, despite only airing on Chicago's WMAQ and never being fully sponsored throughout its duration. The popularity is due in part to transcription discs for three-quarters of the episodes being discovered in the early 1980s and circulated among old-time radio fans, which helped inspire additional interest and research into the show. The powerful and radical storytelling of Richard Durham, particularly for the Times, combined with the quality of the ensemble performing these episodes, make them well worth revisiting. The series debuted June 27, 1948 on WMAQ in the public service time slot of Sunday at 10 a.m. The first several episodes were sponsored in part by the Chicago Defender newspaper until cast member Oscar Brown Jr. ran for office in opposition to one of the paper's endorsed candidates. Additionally, a handful of episodes in the early 1950s were partially sponsored by the Chicago Urban League, but for the most part, WMAQ footed the bill for the series. In many ways, the show built upon Durham's earlier work on Democracy USA, including revisiting several of the individuals and subjects covered in that earlier series. Democracy USA was only 15 minutes long, and WJJB and CBS exerted a fair amount of control over the scripts and subjects. However, for Destination Freedom, Durham had a full 30 minutes to tell his stories and more editorial control over the new series. That is not to say that there were not conflicts between Durham, WMAQ, and NBC. WMAQ retained final editorial control and approval of all scripts. While Durham managed to produce episodes about the attempted slave revolt of Denmark Vesey and the assassination of Mississippi State Senator Charles Caldwell, episodes about Nat Turner and Paul Robeson were deemed too controversial and were rejected. Durham was responsible for all 97 original episodes with the help of Vivian Harsh and her staff at Hall Branch Library. Durham covered a wide range of historical and contemporary subjects and people, from Crispus Attucks and Harriet Tubman to Jackie Robinson and Gwendolyn Brooks. Additional episodes were produced that covered black folklore figures like John Henry and Sackley, and common men and women, such as the all-black 332nd Fighter Group in World War II. The episodes portrayed black characters in a positive and realistic light, in stark contrast to how black people were generally presented in American media at the time. Durham also highlighted the accomplishments of several women, presenting them as every much the equal to the men around them. This, too, was a rare portrayal of women of any race in radio at that time. Despite the popularity of the series, particularly with black Americans, the series broadcast its final episode on August 13, 1950. WMAQ had been spending between fifteen dollars and $18,000 a year on the series, and there were increasingly vocal critics of it, including the American Legion and the Knights of Columbus. In 1950, a new director, John Keown, was brought in to manage the show, and that was the final straw for Durham who declared Keown's massacre of my scripts was butchery I could no longer endure, and he pulled the plug on his show. A couple of months later, WMAQ announced that they were bringing back the show with a different format that would highlight the accomplishments of primarily white patriots. Durham, who held the copyright to the series' name, immediately sued. Ultimately, this version lasted less than a year and produced fewer than half the episodes the prolific Durham had penned. Destination Freedom was notable for its hard-hitting examination of racism and injustice in the United States, particularly at a time when McCarthyism was on the rise. As historian J. Fred MacDonald noted, nowhere else in radio history did a single series, written by a single talent over as long a period, project such a strident reminder of liberties denied and rights abused. Information for this synopsis was taken from the book Word Warrior, Richard Durham, Radio and Freedom by Howard University Professor Sonia D. Williams. From Broadcasting Freedom, Radio, War, and the Politics of Race, 1938 to 1948 by Barbara Diane Savage. From 
Radio Reader Essays in the Cultural History of Radio, from Black Writing from Chicago, edited by Professor Richard R. Guzman, and from information supplied by Franklin Hughes and Ryan Ellett. For old-time radio researchers, I'm your announcer, Patrick Andre. Enjoy the 